For me, I need to have an impact. I need to give meaning to my life, for my son, for the next generation. I don't know how I can explain that, but I feel I need to do that. It's in my body. I really want to do something because I think if we are passive, nothing will happen. So we have to start something. We have to start something. So maybe I was the first one in Martinique. Maybe I will um, give inspiration to new generation. But if you want to do something, we have to be active. Hi, everybody. Welcome to a new season of Start Right Here. We are the podcast that puts the spotlight on the career paths of BIPAC beauty professionals, entrepreneurs, and creatives, as well as issues related to beauty and inclusion impacting us in the industry, as well as impacting consumers. I'm your host, Corinne Corbett, and I hope that conversations on this show help fuel your path to success. Hi, everybody. On today's show, we're going international. I'm pleased to welcome Shirley Bio, founder of Katie Lease, a skincare company that is amazing. And we're going to talk about how she started a beauty movement using bananas. Welcome, Shirley. Hi, Corinne. I'm so delighted to be with you today. It's my pleasure to have you. Before we start talking about your career path, let's begin with some fun questions in our For the Love of Beauty section. What's the first beauty product you ever purchased? I think my first one, it was to treat my acne when I was a teenager. And then what's the latest product you've ever purchased? It's a lipstick. And what color was the lipstick? A red one. And what's the beauty advice you live by or leave alone? clean canvas because it's important to wash your face morning and night to free your face from the impurities and all the the things that you collect during the day in a city. So I think it's a clean your skin. And that makes a lot of sense given what you do. Was the beauty industry a destination or a detour for you? I think beauty was a destination for me, unexpected <laughs> trip to beauty because I don't come from the beauty industry. Maybe when I was young, I created, you know, a beauty a remedies with my mother <laughs> from my garden, but I never thought uh-huh. I will have this adventure in the beauty industry when I was younger. So it's a detour that led to your destination. Yeah, it's a destination, yeah. Yes. Let's go back to your upbringing. You talked about making beauty products with your mother in the garden. Tell me where you were born and grew up. I was born in Djibouti in East Africa. And then I grew up until my eight years old. And uh, I come back in Martinique. And also I grew up in all my teenager in Martinique. And then I leave Martinique to study when I was 17 years old. What was it like growing up in Martinique? especially since you didn't have a television. What kind of influences help shape your ideas about yourself and your beauty? I think it was my mother, in fact. My mother was my model. I grew up with a very committed family, so for social causes, but also environmental causes. So we were autosufficient in our garden. So when I was young, I spent my time outside play in my garden. When we want to eat something, we just go to the garden. So even our beauty remedies, it was made by my mother with the fruit or the plants that we found in the garden. For example, I have memories when we took bath, my mother put a bassin outside to the sun hot, you know, to uh, To heat the water, to heat the water. And she put in the, the water some leaves from different essence for our skin so she always take care about our skin and her hair using the plant from the garden so i think i was pretty naive when i arrived in paris because um, i didn't have a lot usage of the tv because the tv came very late in martinique so i discovered 
the energy and all the technology when I arrived in Paris, in fact. Okay, so that was like a culture shock. Yeah, of course, because people, they are not smiling. And I'm just arrived from Martinique alone. And, uh, you know, I'm a very happy person, so I smile a lot in the subway. <laughs> so I understood that I have to stop very fast. <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty shock. And especially because I grew up really around the plant and nature and animals. And when you arrive in Paris, it's more a cold city. It's a very rich in terms of culture, but it's very cold in terms of relation with the nature. Interesting. So rich in culture, but sort of cold and distant from nature. Yeah, a kind of rich in culture, but a lack on... In fact, when you arrive in Paris, it's like when you cut your link with nature, so you cut your link with intuition, so... You become uh, like a citizen. For me, it's like you become a robot. <laughs> yeah, a robot because you just wake up, go to the subway, you rock, you come back to your house and you never have a link with nature. You don't have a garden. So you have to go to the supermarket to buy things. So it's really different. And the taste of the fruit are not the same. So it was very difficult for me. For example, a tomato I have in my garden. When I go to the supermarket, I discovered tomato without taste. So it was very surprising. You knew immediately the difference, not just because there's no greenery, but the flavor was different. Yeah, and you know, it's also the temperature of the fruit. In my garden, in Martinique, when you keep a fruit in your garden, it is hot because of the sun. And in supermarket, it is cold, like it is dye, you know? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the significance of bananas to Martinique especially to the black people in Martinique. Oh, yeah, it's a long story. <laughs> I think it starts when in 1736, a royal law put mandatory the fact that every slave owner has to plant 25 banana trees per slave owner. And they have to let them plant up to 50 banana trees in a parcel, but in a free way, freely. So they are free to plant banana tree. And it happened only in Martinique. So we have a deep and old relationship with the banana tree because for us, it's associated to the fruit of freedom at the contrary of sugarcane plantation because sugarcane, for us, it's a slavery past. But banana tree is different because we just take care of this fruit to feed our needs. And that is why also we know very well the different usage of banana tree. Every part of the banana tree has a usage for us. The name we give to the banana tree is the plant of the saison usage. Because you can do everything with this plant. You can cook, you can eat the flower, you can eat the peel, you can eat the pulp, you can cook with the leaves. And for the pharmacopoeia, if you want to use it as a food supplement, for example, you can use the peel you can use the flower like a tea for um, pregnant women because it allows to decrease the temperature to improve the lactation, for example. You can use uh, the pulp of a green banana to repair your stomach. So you can use a peel for psoriasis, eczema, or acne. So every part of the banana tree, we have a traditional know-how and usage around them. And that's amazing because most people especially those of us in the U.S., don't know much about bananas. We see the Chiquita banana commercial, and that's all we know. So to know that it is a symbol of freedom and the origin of so many cures and businesses is amazing. When you went to Paris, you knew that there were a lot of job opportunities back in Martinique after you graduated. Yeah, I know when I left Martinique, that maybe I will never come back in my island, like a lot of person in the French West Indies, because we don't have a lot of opportunities. The main companies are owned by the same family, and it is maybe normal, I don't know, but they will give the best jobs to maybe person from France. So during a lot of years, to be totally honest, they give the best job to white person, so mm -hmm. not to black persons. It is uh, so sad when you left your parents because you don't know if you will come back. Only maybe once a year. I think, you know, during the five first years when I studied in Paris, I spent Christmas alone 
and even um, the new year also alone. Yes. And it is terrible when you are young to be alone during this year because it costs a lot to come back. So it's difficult. And my parents made so huge sacrifice to allow me to study in France. So um, it's a deep sacrifice. So. so although you're an entrepreneur now, once you were in Paris, you had a few corporate jobs. What kind of work did you do? Before to create my company, I was a um, manager in the SAP. It's a big project to uh, manage the different processes of a company. And I was one of the most famous in France because I was the first one to do a lot of CRM projects. So I travel a lot in Europe. But after my son arrived, I really want to go back in my island to be close to my parents. For me, it was very important that my son grow up with nature, not in a city. So I yes. decided to leave everything and to go in Martinique, close to my parents, to allow my son to have this chance to know his grandparents. And that's great. And once you got there, you explored entrepreneurship. Did you ever think you were going to be a beauty entrepreneur? Never. But never an entrepreneur because my mother, she was at home. My parents, my father worked for the French army. So I never, 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 never thought that I will become an entrepreneur because it was not in my DNA. In fact, when I go back in Martinique, I was very lucky because a, a person gave me the opportunity to be CEO of a company in Martinique. So I discovered a job of a CEO, and I love this job. I love being uh, not an entrepreneur, but it was quite the same. It was quite uh -huh. the same. And after five years, we have a strong crisis in Martinique and in Guadeloupe because the cost of the life is so huge for them, for uh -huh. the population, and also because we have so huge inequality between the different population. So we had a strong crisis during at least more than one month, at least two months. This crisis, it was like an electroshock. I have two solutions. I leave again and I go back to Paris because it is true. We have a lot of issues in Martinique and I have a problem with that. Or I stay and I try to do something, but something different, more positive to find a way to change maybe the future of my island, but not only for the social purpose, but for the economy. Because we are so dependent of the tourism and the banana production, we will not be able to improve the weakness of our island if we don't change the way we live now. I think it's admirable that you would like, let me try to find a solution. Let's talk about the commercialization of bananas and the laws that were in place. How long were those laws in place and when did that change? In fact, I don't know if you know that 20% of the annual production of the bananas are thrown away just because bananas are ugly and single. So bananas, and it is in all the world, are facing an unfair situation just because of their appearance. <laughs> so it's funny, it's like in beauty. And in Martinique, we are a small island with limited resources, more and more with the climate change. We suffer of hurricane, so we have waste more and more each year. And when you have a hurricane, every banana tree are down, so you have to cut everything. So a lot of, a lot of waste. I thought, I don't have money, I don't have land, but I have my brand and I have idea, so maybe I can use this weight to do something with that. And um, because I have the knowledge from my parents, I know banana tree, it's a powerful plant. So I decided 10 years ago to launch a research program to analyze and characterize the different components inside the banana tree. And I went to see the banana grower to ask them, are you agree to let me use your waste and maybe do something very new, very crazy? to transform your ugly banana into beautiful active ingredients. And what did they say? Did they think you were crazy? Yeah. In fact, they say I'm totally crazy. <laughs> but I was so passionate that they decided to support me. But they also say to me, if banana tree is really a super plant, 
L'Oréal should do something. So maybe you are wrong, but because you are very passionate, we will test you and you have one year to prove you can do something with badinetry waste. Wow. They thought because you came up with this idea that it might not be a good one because nobody had thought of it before. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How wrong they were. But wasn't it against the law for a while to commercialize bananas? It's not bananas, it's a traditional pharmacopoeia. Oh, okay. Yeah. In fact, in the traditional pharmacopoeia of the French West Indies is officially recognized in France only since 10 years. Oh, wow. It was forbidden since the slavery period for black person to do commerce business with traditional plants. For example, a pharmacist can sell chamomilla, but not a native plant from Martinique. Wow. So it's only been in the last decade. Yeah. I really want to know, after you studied the waste, what made you create beauty products? I thought a lot what should be the best way to highlight the benefits of the banana tree. And I thought a lot, I had two solutions, food supplement and beauty. And for me, we are lucky because at the same time, we are Caribbean, but we also come from Europe and from France. And France is well known in the world for its cosmetic, for its beauty industry. Yes. And also for me, beauty maybe has a better image compared to food supplement. And because I really want to give the best for my banana tree, for me, beauty was the best solution, really the best solution. Is it true that you also had a dream about starting a company? You know, I, I'm come from the Caribbean, so I believe in invisible sign. And a lot of things I do and I did and I will do coming from my dream. When I decided to start in my company, I dream a lot of banana. It was awful during several, several weeks. Every night, I'm thinking banana. And even now... It's not possible for me to do another thing because I have a vision of what I want to do with banana tree. And it's so deeply in my body and in my mind. It's like an obsession. Uh -huh. <laughs> so you, it's funny because with my husband, he invited me in a hotel in the south of France. And when we arrived in the room, a lot of banana um, pictures. So I asked to my husband, no, it's not possible. It's a, it's a conspiration. <laughs> so I go to the lobby of the hotel and I asked them, every room has banana as a decoration? He told me, no, only your room. And it was a coincidence. So I told to my husband, okay, so it is my destiny. Banana tree is my destiny. I have so many signs every, every day with bananas. Okay, I will stop to fight and I will let the banana tree possess me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like a spirit. Yes. Possessed by the spirit of bananas. <laughs> Tell me about the product line. All the product line are designed around our raw materials. So we develop from our R&D department three innovative ingredients. They are only ingredients. This is very particular because I extract the lipid part of the banana fruit. There is 1% in the pulp. 6% in the peel. And this is this part of the banana tree that interests me because they are very rich in phytosterol. These molecules are close to DHEA and they allow skin uh, to be more repair. So our three ingredients are oily ingredients from pink banana, yellow banana, and green banana. Green banana is for young skin because it has, it allows to refine your skin and to treat from imperfection, like for example, acne. The yellow banana is for mature skin because we have firmin effect, which promotes the synthesis of collagen and elastin. And the pink one, it's from pink bananas. It's our new ingredient. It's a super, super antioxidant. It has a antioxidant power that are 4,500 times more effective compared to argan oil. Say that again, 4,500 times. Yeah, it's not just one or two. Huh? It's 4,500 times more active compared to argon oil. And we have three patents. One, because we have anti-aging properties. The second one, because we have soothing properties. And that is why we use 
in our traditional medicine, banana tree for acne, eczema, psoriasis, and the last one because we have a depigmentation effect. So our ingredients are perfect, especially the pink one, to decrease the appearance of dark spots. You treat acne, dark spots, and mature skin. So you've got something for somebody of every age. Yeah, in fact, it's funny because banana tree feeds our need depending of our, our age. Imagine green banana, it's for young skin. Yellow banana, it's for mature skin. And there is clinical studies that prove that when the banana, the peel of it's very black, the peel contain molecules against cancer. So it's very funny because the banana tree, I think it's so surprising ingredients, very close to us. And do you know, Corinne, that it takes nine months to have a bunch of bananas? Nine months? Like for us, like when you are pregnant and you are expecting a baby, it's the same. So it's so close to us. So, um, you know, I love banana tree. You created this line and then you wanted to launch it in France. What kind of obstacles did you face from retailers? I think eight years ago, retailers, they feeling not concerned by sustainable brand, by organic cosmetic. And especially when you come from Martinique, you are a black founder and you work on banana. So too many things for them. I remember one who told me, I don't want this type of consumer in my boutique. I said to her, why? Which type of consumer? She told me, black person. And I remember I go back in the subway and I cried <laughs> because it was too um, difficult for me to discover that in the beauty industry was so, I don't want to use this word because it's maybe too strong, but they didn't see the potential of the black community in beauty because we are the most consumer of beauty products. Right. Yeah. So we should be the priority of the retailers. So it was eight years ago. So I decided to go directly to the Asian market. And you know what? It's a continent very open mind. They didn't care I come from a black country. They didn't care I come from Martinique. They didn't care I work on the bananas. What thing so that I have a science background and our research is based on the traditional know-how. And Asian people, they love tradition, they love pharmacopoeia, and they love innovation. So have in these two parts of my company, innovation and tradition, they love the brand. So I'm open Japan, Korea, and Australia very fast compared to the French market. But now it's different. Yes. Now it's different because especially with what's happened in the US maybe one year ago. Yes. What's happened to you has an echo in France. So it's echoed around the world. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How many SKUs do you have in the brand? We have at least 25 SKU divided in... Six main ranges. One, it's Musa Clean. Alors, Musa, it's a name that we give to the species of banana tree. For example, the plantain, it's Musa Paradisiaca or, or Musa Sympathium. And the fruit, it's a Musa Cavendish. So the range, they have the name of Musa. So it's banana clean, in fact. So Musa Clean, it's cleanser. So we have makeup removal oil. We have a cleansing gel. We have micella, jelly micella. We have mask. We have also a range dedicated to hydration. It's Hydra Muse. It's a muse of hydration. Okay. We have a range dedicated to anti-aging, but for young skin from 20 until 40 years old. A range, it's Musa Lift for mature skin like me. So because we have to firm our skin. And we also have a new range. It's Musa Light around the pink banana that allow you to have more glow and to unify your skin tone. And we also have another range with our banana oil because we are the only one for now to have banana oil. Wow, so what does banana oil do? We have two different banana oil for now. The pink one, it will be new and we will launch it in November. The green banana oil, it's very, very, very dry. It's perfect for your skin or oily skin. When you apply on your skin, you don't have oily effect. The okay. skin absorbs everything and it's perfect, for example, to treat imperfection. My son uses it for his acne. You also can use it as an aftershave 
because we have 30% of men in our consumer. And it's perfect when you have fine hair because it's very, very light oil. The yellow banana oil, it's a dry oil, but less dry compared to the green one. It is more comfortable. So it's perfect when you have a dry skin or when you have a mature skin, because when you have a mature skin, you need to have more nutrition. So for example, me, I use the green one maybe until my 40 years old, but now because I'm close to 50, it's not enough nourishing for me. So I use the yellow banana oil. And the yellow banana oil, you can also use it if you have curly hair, for example. It's perfect for that also. So you can use it on your hair? Yeah, it's face and hair. Oh, that's great. You broke into Asia first, then Europe. When did you bring the products to the U.S.? It was in November, last November. So it's recently. It's very recent. And the... reaction to the product has been good, right? Yeah, very positive. You know, I was a little bit afraid maybe for to come to the US market because it's a big uh, market. And also because maybe I'm a little bit shame of my French accent. <laughs> But for me, the US market is very strategic because we are all American. You also love bananas because in your country, you're allowed to have a claim on your food supplement when you have bananas inside because they are rich in potassium. So you can put on your packaging, it's good for health. We can do that in France. And also, you caring a lot about the sourcing of the raw materials, if they are sustainable, if they are organic, if they are clean. And I was pretty sure that maybe the US market should be the best one for Cadalis. Maybe mm -hmm. as a Caribbean, maybe because it's with bananas and also because consumers here are so deeply committed when they buy cosmetics. So they are looking for quality, they are looking for commitment, they are looking for, I think, all the things that I try to uh, share with my community. I want to talk a little bit about the sustainability and the organic and eco-conscious focus of your brand. Why was that important to you? Because I come from a very committed family, my parents are, they were unionists and they also founded association to protect the nature. So I grew up in a very committed family. So it was so natural for me when I founded my company to add all my personal values inside. Now we have three main values. The first is tackling food waste. And I think it's important because this is one of the main solutions to have a direct and a clear impact to reverse the climate change. And especially now, because we have limited resources and the issue of tomorrow, it's food. It's not the technology, it's food. And so for me, the first one is tackling food waste. The second one, it's green chemistry. So it's to be innovative, but using only natural solvent or natural processes like microwaves, ultrasound, subcritical water, for example. So we don't use chemical to extract our molecules. So we protect the nature and we protect your skin also. And the last one, it's to have an impact, but I want to see the impact. So I don't want to give money to one person for planet, for example because I really want to be active, but directly. So I decided in 2016 to have 100% of the banana grower part of my company. Not one, but 100%. The poor, the rich, the white, the black. Because for me, inclusive capitalism, it's the only way to fight the intergenerational inequalities. And it's okay. allow me to put at the same level every banana grows, and to share with them the result, the fruit of our growth, and also, for sure, to secure the supply of our waste. And what we do also, it we invest a lot of female, and especially in science, and especially coming from the French West Indies, because invest on girls is uncalculable. When you invest on girls, you have so huge results, And yes. for me, it was important to train my population in science career to become doctor in biochemistry, because if I want to change the future of my airline and because my project is to establish a factory in Martinique and our research in Martinique, I need to have a person to run 
all this R&D program. So I need to train the young population and especially female because I'm a feminist. <laughs> right. And you've said so much that's important here. First, the way that you do business is healthy for the planet or not doing harm to the planet. Second, your business model includes every banana grower. That's major. That's such a big idea. So everyone that's a banana grower has a stake in the success of Kerilis. Like they want it to win. And then third, empowering young women and girls to embrace science, to dream big and come back to Martinique and work in this industry. Because one of the reasons you told me earlier that a lot of young people left Martinique is because there were not jobs outside of tourism and some other areas or related to tourism. So creating the science path is beyond amazing. And it is such a solid idea. Let's talk about how Martinique has benefited from this upcycling. So what is upcycling and how is Martinique benefiting from this? It's a way to give another destiny to a waste. So for example, currently we thrown at least 14,000 tons of ugly bananas. And I only speak about the green one. I don't speak about the leaves and the flowers and the trunk. So we collect them and we transform them in raw materials, but with zero waste because we use everything. So when we transform agro waste, we use everything for the beauty industry. So we don't produce another waste. This is the target of our processes, to have a zero waste processes. You know what it is very interesting in these processes? We don't use banana for the human industry. So we don't use something growers can sell to the supermarket. We only use something they don't use, they don't sell to create an added value. So you didn't use the stuff that would be thrown away. And you've created a whole industry out of the waste. Yeah. In fact, it's in progress because we spend maybe 10 euros in R&D. And currently, we are transposing our laboratory processes into industrial processes and now we will establish a plant now because we are ready. And you know, I launched a brand as a proof of concept. So now I create the market for the raw materials. The brand helped me a lot. So now I can establish a factory because there is no interest to have a factory without a market, you know, to sell the raw materials. So when I build my project, I think very in a different way. So I have to prove there is an interest in the raw materials. I have to launch a brand to prove that the brand can have consumer. And then people now, they well know the benefits of banana, so I can sell my raw materials. So now I'm ready to have the industry. So it's quite very original. But uh, It is very original. Out of that, you've created a biotech innovation company that is exploring this as well as the pharmacopoeia. Tell me a little bit more about the pharmacopoeia possibilities. There are so many things that you can use in the carabine. Do you know that Martinique is one of the most biodiversity in a very small island? It is in Martinique. You are most different species in Martinique compared to Cuba, for example. In fact, what I try to do is not only to work on banana. We are building partnership with industry because my first target is to focus on food waste. So I mm -hmm. spoke with the juice industry, for example, in Martinique, to identify the type of waste. For example, is it seed? Is it peel? Is it the pulp? The quantity and in which period exactly to have a kind of calendar of waste uh, supplement. So now what we will do is to study this agro waste and in parallel, we will work with growers to plant other types of plants that are well known to have, for example, beauty or food supplement benefits. And we are working to develop an algorithm, <laughs> it's very technical, that will allow us to go faster when we analyze a plant, to allow us to know which type of eco-extraction 
we can use depending of the nature of the molecule inside a plant. So, for example, do we have to maybe extract the lipid, the aqueous ingredients? Do we have to use ultrasound, microwave? And it will depend of the nature of the molecules. So we try to go faster. We try to develop a kind of mathematic models that will allow us to go faster. And it is really due to the banana experience because with banana, we study everything. The lipid part, the aqueous part, different type of eco extraction. So we have a lot of data. So our target is to allow us to develop a kind of model from the banana experience. One of the things that you've successfully done is blend tradition with science. Yeah, because for me, it's the only way to have a credibility on the market. Nobody know really the Creole pharmacopoeia. So if you want to be taken serious, if you want people to respect what you do, it is important to have proof. So for me, science, it's a way to prove that our ingredients is effective. Our plants are effective. And there is so many new technology, very natural, that allow us to extract more molecules. So um, combine innovation and combine tradition, for me, it's the best way to um, highlight our tradition and to create added value because the science allows us to create added value. What do you love most about what you do? I have the feeling to do something to support my community. I don't want anymore to spend time just for nothing. For me, I need to have an impact. I need to give meaning to my life, for my son, for the next generation. I don't know how I can explain that, but I feel I need to do that. It's in my body. I really want to do something because I think if we are passive, nothing will happen. So. We have to start something. We have to start something. So maybe I was the first one in Martinique. Maybe I will um, give inspiration to new generation. But if you want to do something, we have to be active. We have to support company that want to change something. Yeah, I think it's great. And it causes everyone to think twice about what kind of impact they're leaving through the work that they do. What are your plans for the future of Kerelis? In fact, we have three business activities because we have a vertical business model. For the R&D program, we launched two new theses in biochemistry to work on the, not only beauty, but also functional food, especially because we are working on the metabolic syndrome, so the diabetes, the high pressure, and a lot of disease that we suffer in the West Indies. We also, for the industry part, it's to establish my factory and to become the first supplier of raw material. And for the brand, it's to um, develop new products for beauty, for hair, for face, and also food supplement. And we also hope to succeed in the U.S. How do listeners find the products here in the U.S.? And then let's talk about Europe, Asia. In the U.S., you can find our products in our website, but also at the Detox Market and 13 Loons at the GCPini, also Marjani, we are on Melanin Grace. So you can find all our retailers on our website page. And in Europe, we are in um, Selective Beauty, like uh, Nocibe, Mariono. We also are in organic niche retailers like Mademoiselle Bio and also in pharmacies. We are in a lot of pharmacies also because we are backed by science. So it's easy for us to work with pharmacies. And then what is your social media handles? People want to follow you. In Instagram, we have two pages, one for the U.S. market and one for France. So it's Cadalis or Cadalis underscore U.S. We also have Facebook pages, Pinterest, a YouTube channel. Yeah, we try to stay connected, to stay tuned with our community. Yes. And then what would you call your hero ingredient? My hero ingredient is the pink banana oil because it's very raw and the producer doesn't want to use this species because you have less pink banana on a bunch compared to a yellow banana bunch. In fact, they win less money. But what I try to explain them, 
Maybe you have a less pink banana on a bunch, but they are so amazing. You can sell with a higher prices and especially in beauty. So my next target is to um, try to convince them to produce more pink bananas. And for a lot of us, we didn't even know pink bananas existed. So it is exciting to know about how powerful the banana is empowering this ecosystem that you've created through Catalyst. It's like amazing. Finally, in this last section of the podcast, I want to leave our listeners with some concrete steps on where to begin. So let's go into our starting five that take away tips from our guests. Could you give us five tips on being a more eco-conscious consumer? Okay. So do you know you can eat the peel of a banana? So if you want to be eco-conscious, when you eat your bananas, so you eat the pulp, please keep the peel. You can use the peel for several purposes. You can cook it. I love to cook it with the sugar and butter to put it like a topping on cookies, for example. It's so amazing. Also, you can cut in small pieces and maybe use Colombo or curry. And uh-huh. you can add it also in a fish, for example, fillet, like um, pieces of paper and so on. You can also use the peel to create a made mask for your face because the peel are more repairing and more anti-aging compared to the pulp. So please use your peel as a smoothie. You mix your peel with a natural vegetable oil, like olive or maybe sunflower, for example. Uh-huh. And you can add, uh, I love add uh, some honey, for example, and you apply as a mask. You can also use a peel and you put in water and you wait maybe 48 hours, so two days. And you use it as a fertilizer for your plant in your apartment. And you also can use a peel. The white part of the peel, you can on your tooth to have Uh better white tooth. Or Uh if you have acne, you can put this white part inside the peel on Uh your pimples and you wait a day after and it allows to repair your pimples. She gave us more than five tips for a banana peel. And if we used a couple of them, we would definitely help the planet in some ways by being a little bit more eco-conscious. So it's a lot for us to think about, and it's something that any of us can do, whether we're in the beauty industry or not. Even if we're not making product, we can make an impact. Well, Shirley, I can't thank you enough for being on the show. This has been such a delight. Thank you, Corinne. I was so happy to share all these banana secrets with you and a piece of uh, the Martinique can story. Yes, because there's so much greatness And we don't think enough about what investing in the Caribbean could mean for the world. Yeah, you know, it's a pity because a lot of countries are looking other region and only think about Caribbean like a touristic place. But we don't have resources like oil, gas or gold and so on. But we have our brain, we have idea. So we have a very innovative and resilient population. So please, we need to be highlighted not only for our beach and our, the sun. And uh, we are able to do some amazing things. You've heard it here first. Don't sleep on the Caribbean, especially if you're an investor. Think about it. That's our show for today. If you have questions about where to start in your beauty career, drop us a line at hello at beautybizcamp.com. Remember, there are many roads to success, but each of them requires you to start. So take that step forward today. See you next time.